What's up guys, this is Nico from Limitless and today we will be taking a look at a deck that's been around for a pretty long time since uh, its release in Burning Shadows to be exact and yeah but it got some new tricks with the new set more like one new trick but yeah one other trick was required because of the new set so uh, yeah let's take a look at the new version of ho o uh, of course we have three ho -Oh GX, it's our main attacker. Only relevant attack is uh, the second one which is Phoenix Burn which is uh, 180 damage for four energies and this Pokemon can't use Phoenix Burn during your next turn. Kind of important to keep in mind that it only states that you can't use Phoenix Burn next turn because there are a lot of similar um, attacks that just state the Pokemon can't attack at all during the next turn. So you could technically use Sacred Fire the turn after, but the deck isn't really built to use Sacred Fire because it only does 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. And the GX attack is like completely irrelevant because you don't really want to use a GX attack to put three um, Pokemon GX and EX onto your bench. So yeah. Um, next up, um, which is like one of two versions. Uh, one version of the whole Kiava deck uses Max Elixir and plays like a way more aggressive approach so that you all you do is like you attach energies your first uh, few turns and then you just attack with whole three times basically. But um, this version uses Celezel GX for the late game and Celezel GX the Diabolical Claws has a very nice synergy with Ho because for two energies it does 50 damage for each prize card you have taken. So let's say we took four prizes with Ho, which isn't too unlikely because Ho can basically one shot any EX and GX, so that's two prizes each, and it usually can attack two times unless your opponent has um, like a really good counterplay or a Lele DC at the right point. So you just go down to two prizes, then you um, like in the meantime you attach one energy to your Solandit, then the second energy to Celezer and then Diabolic Claws for 200 and Choice Band 230 uh, for game. Uh, yeah, two Celandit so that we can, if we want to, bench two because sometimes you um, might want to bench two Celandits and then use um, a card that we will come to next, the GX Attack of Turtonator to attach to both of them so your opponent can only deal with one because if you only play one one line of Celezer then your opponent just Guzmas your Celandit, knocks it out and then you're left with nothing basically. Yeah, as I said, next up we have Turtonator, just a one-off because it's a very it has a very nice um, GX attack which allows us for one energy for one fire energy to attach five fire energies from our discapal to our Pokemon. So if we don't get to draw four prize with Ho. We can just, uh, in the middle of the game, use Turtonator, put some energy back into play, and then go from there because you you don't really want to use Kiave uh, in the middle of the game. Also, Shell Trap and Bright Flame, pretty useful attacks, especially Bright Flame because it's also an attack that allows you to deal a lot of damage. Um, then, the first new trick, or the only actual new trick because it's from the new set, is Downwing's Necrozma. Um, yeah, all the attacks are completely irrelevant because we don't run any other energy aside from fire. But the ability, once during your turn, before you attack, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you may switch it with your active Pokemon. That's an attack we had multiple times. We had um, Keldeo from Boundaries Crossed. We had uh, the Zoroark from Break uh, Breakthrough that also have the same um, kind of ability. But it's very useful with Ho because usually before you had to Guzma or like retreat, use a different Ho, but now you can just switch in the Necrozma, retreat and use Phoenix Burn again. Then of course three Tapo Lele. Sometimes I actually run to one four because you really want to have turn one Kiave, but running for Lele is also uh, not really want to uh, really what you want to do so yeah you're just rolling a three then the second trick which is a new trick in the specific deck but it's 
a pretty old card is uh, Wobbuffet, um, which is required because of Glacian. Because if your opponent just puts down a Glacier on turn 1, you can't use Lele, so if you don't have a Kiave in hand, you just lose. But with Wobbuffet, you can shut down Glacian's ability, but you can still use your Tapo Lele or your Dawnwings Necrozma. So you can still grab yourself a Kiave or switch into your Ho and stuff. So yeah, uh, one Wobbuffet. Um, Stefan Ivanov, for example, used a similar deck for his top 8 placement in Malmö. And he used two Wobbuffet, but I felt like during my testing that you don't really want to have two because it's only good against Glacian basically. And you it, starting with it is so unlikely that you will have to search for it anyways. And the one Wobbuffet being priced is also like, not too unlikely, so you would have to price Wobbuffet in the specific matchup and stuff. So I decided to just go with one. Um, as an out against Glacian, and otherwise you just discard it and stuff because you don't need it at all. Then only one Volcanion EX, which I don't like too much because I often want to have two, especially if you have to take with Volcanion or Turtonator that just can't that easily deal 210 damage because if you don't play two Volcanion, your maximum damage output with, with Volcanion, for example, is 190 with one choice band and one steam up. So that's not enough to knock out a Zorak, for example. So I would want to fit in a second one, but I don't really know how. So it's unfortunately only one. Then um, two Nest Ball to search out our um, Pokemon, because oftentimes you will have to Ultra Ball for Lele turn one, but you don't have a Hoo, for example, and you just can't really afford to use multiple Ultra Balls with like a six, five, six card hand. So that you would have to like basically um, discard all the resource. So Nest Ball, it's a pretty nice card in the deck. Then one Super Rod to get back stuff like if you have to discard the one of Celestial GX or if you need your Turtonator back, Unicrosma, uh, Vulcanian for example. So one Super Rod, four Ultra Ball, classic stuff. Uh, three Scorch Stuff. Most other decks have stuff like Zoroark or Artillery or Oranguru. This deck don't doesn't <laughs> so um yeah we have scorched stuff here as like some kind of draw then for our draw support three Cynthia for Guz uh, yeah for Guzma standard supporter then two N and uh, three Sycamore are uh, like the usual support um engine um you could play four Sycamore but uh usually you want to Kiava on your first turn anyways and the turns after you will often have cards that you don't want to discard because you might want to keep your Guzmas or your choice mans and stuff so I decided to only go with uh, three Sycamore but um, three Cynthia instead. Then of course one of the key cards in the deck next to ho is uh, Kiave. It allows us to uh, search our deck for four fire energy cards attached to one of your Pokemon then shuffle uh, your deck and your turn ends. So ideally you want to go first and use it on your first turn because you can't attack anyways. But uh, usually, um, even if you're going second, using Kiave turn one is fine because it's still a super strong uh, support and also the key card in the deck. And yeah, for the tools we have three choice band so that Ho even without Volcanion can easily deal 210 or that Turtonator can um, deal more than 210 uh, with one steam up. And Floatstown, obviously we need Floatstown for uh, Dawnwings Necrozma because it has two retreat and we can't afford to always discard two fire energy if we want to switch out our hole, so three Floatstown. And last but not least, 16, en uh, 16 fire energies. We need fire energies for so much stuff. We want to attach them, we want to discard them with Scorch, I've discard them with um, uh, Steam Up, we want to take them out of our deck turn one with Kiave, so we also want to have some left because usually like in most decks uh, your energy count is like 12 13 so let's say you use Kiava, then you only have 12 energies at most left in your deck so that's basically then the normal amount and you still want to draw into them so 16 energies nice amount sometimes i want to have more but it's pretty hard to take um, out stuff in the deck that's not like 
consistency so and you don't want to take out consistency because yeah you want to get your turn uh, one key over consistently and yeah that's basically uh, it for the deck and I hope you enjoy the games so fighting psychic what could it be Buzzword Gap is probably the most likely answer. Don't go look. That, uh, that name sounds familiar. I think it's one of Pedro's friends. So, Buzzgarp is probably the most likely answer since he's probably going to play at least a decent deck and not like some Machamp, Wobbuffet stuff or whatever. So, yeah. Let's see. Ah, uh, so landed is still better than nothing, I guess. And let's see. Yeah, probably gonna be Buzzgarp. Unless he decides to play Buzzrock without Octillery, but I don't see that happening. Will we see a Trubbish? Probably yes. Yes, but it's the wrong one. So... Scorch Death and Pray for a Hover or an Espoir or a Ultra Ball. I guess. That's another cylinder, but that's not what I'm looking for. So let's see. That's still not what I'm looking for. Huh. So I guess turn one curve is not happening. Maybe turn two curves. I don't really want to ultra ball for so for who, but I'm just gonna life call him, I guess. So the wood is gonna be a pain to deal with, but maybe I can knock it out. I hope that he doesn't hit his max elixirs or something similar. Maybe. Also, I have to hope that he doesn't get his Garbotoxin out because. That would be tough. I should, probably should have used Lele for Giava last turn. Just to be sure. But thankfully he doesn't get what he needs. To prevent me from using Kiava. So yeah. Two key of end now. I also kind of have to hope that he doesn't 
Kuzma knock out my ho because then I just lose. <laughs> well, let's see. How likely is that even? He's at five prizes, so yeah. His GX attack just knocks out ho at this point. So if he has energy goes more than I just lose. Okay, looks like he doesn't have it. But he will be able to knock out my ho next turn with pseudo voodoo that's pretty pretty not nice but let's see maybe we can do something to prevent him from doing it when he goes with the ff to all of them so i'm just gonna stick him out because i definitely need to knock out the buzz one okay Gonna bench all the good stuff. Ten damage shot. Hmm. It is three energies. Uh, this is bad. Um. I guess I'm just gonna Phoenix Burn for 180. This is actually pretty nice that he takes the knockout with Basol because now I can just use Shell Trap to knock out his Basol, which is actually pretty decent for me. Gives me some time. I definitely want the small guys back in. Also, just on fire energy. We can actually bench one of the small guys again. I definitely want to end him next turn. So, I will just pick the Salandit. And this cuts in here. Maybe also get a new hole. So maybe I will just nitro tank next turn. I don't know if he plays the Max Elixir version yet. Haven't seen any Max Elixirs so far. How many Scotch of Toys have I left? Only one.
actually gonna just copy my shell trap. Okay, he ends me. That's okay because he ends himself down to two. So If only Pearl wouldn't be in play. But I could actually That seems actually like a very very good plan. Just going after his pseudo voodoo. Wait, I don't have any Cosmos left. But. So I have to come up with a new idea. So I have two Guzmas Prime. Huh. So I guess I'm just gonna set up my bot at this point. I mean, I'll have to use an attack for Guzma that, like, prevents him from... Do I just trade him at this point? No, that doesn't make any sense, so I have to Nitro tank. Last seems like a decent attack. Take one knockout. I have to go for Volcanic Heat for the two shot. I could Volcanic Heat and then. Wait, how much do I need to do? Um, we can eat just 110 right now. Hmm. Okay, I have a choice, but that's something. Just setting up the knockout with Layla. Hoping that he doesn't have a Guzma now. And Guzma on its own doesn't even do too much. I mean, at this stage, I could still use Heat Blast next turn. Then he would still need a Guzma to win. Okay, let's see what he, what he hits. Okay. Still going after the Celeza. Um, and how much is this guy left? 90. Oh no. Uh, 
I mean, I guess Heat Blast is still the best bet. Especially because none of my Pokemon now has like 110 left. I will keep the energy. So all I all I need is one one Guzma. One Guzma. Nice. So how many strongs does he have left? Only one. So he needs Guzma strong now. Okay, looks like he doesn't have it, so it should be game if he doesn't end. If he doesn't end, it's game for sure. Nice. So I didn't really pay attention to what his typing was, so let's see what he's playing. <laughs> Shouldn't change our gameplay too much. Unfortunately, no Lele or Kiave in hand so far. I uh, know we might get our first hint. Okay, he's probably playing Zero Pot. Or anything else, basically, with Zorak. Yeah. Turn one. Kiara is pretty important against Zoropod because otherwise we just might be too slow. Of course, it still depends on what he does. Okay, place Zorak Weavile. Still doesn't mean that I don't need the turn one Kiara, but I guess we will have to work with what we've got. So I'm just gonna give a turn here because just needs one less energy attachment to use this big attack. Okay, next turn we can we can stick out. And I guess that's it for my turn. Of course it would be amazing if he whiffs the attacker, but it's very unlikely, so yeah. But it's still possible, especially because he has to puzzle for one card, or like use one puzzle, not puzzle for one card. Okay, he had a DC, but looks like he didn't have much else. So I'm just gonna bench a new one, attach an energy to Turtonet and then just Kiava. As long as this hole stays undamaged, we're in a pretty good spot. Also we know that he had to puzzle for 
I mean, he puzzled for his best two cards probably, one of them DC. He didn't have a supporter last turn, so he has to get one in these two cards. Or he will just not have a supporter. And he actually doesn't have a support, okay, that's that's very good for us. So I can just, I mean, I don't really need the scotch stuff right now. So I'm just gonna grab a Layla, grab a Sycamore, attach Choice Band, attach some, the Fire Energy to Terminator, so that we have a backup attacker. And I also am um, starting to look for a Salandit as like the game finisher. Kinda. Might not even need it. Don't really want to Ultra Ball anything in this end. But I do want to put on Scotch Death at that moment in time. Now I could actually... I, I, I don't want to discard Volcano because I might want to use it for Terminator. So I'm just gonna Phoenix Burn. Most important card right now is or would be a Float Stone. For the Dawnwings Necrozma. But he doesn't have a lot going for him, so it's still fine. Looks like he has to puzzle with one puzzle again. Okay, no, he actually has to puzzle. Okay. Floatstone is pretty much all I, I'm hoping for right now. Selene is also pretty nice. Maybe I should have attached a choice band to Tertinator because he already is down two field lower. And if I had a choice band attached to Tertinator, I could just Guzma next turn, Guzma up Layla, and then I could set up Celeste. As the finisher. So I might actually have to bench more abilities than I would want to. I actually uh, I actually have to. But I'm also going to bench the Salandit. Makes me very vulnerable against Rewild and Breakthrough Zorak, but I'm getting at such a comfortable point that it should be fine. Actually, I don't even have to use my energy. Haha. <laughs> um, so now I can actually attach the energy to Salandit. Okay, now I'm, you know I'm at a very good point. Very good spot. Actually decides to promote a Zorak again. For some reason. Maybe he has a Guzma. He doesn't. So he actually just wants to retreat for some reason.
it is actually the worst thing he could have done. You know, I could just discard all my Lelis. So now he can't use the Rewild at all. That's not game yet. That's still not game. Um, so I might just... Hmm. That's interesting. Do I want to... Go for one one price attacker, or do I just want to chase down a Zorak? I guess. I guess going for the Zorak seems pretty good. So now he has to end me. Or use Ice Roll, of course. He only has one Acer Roller left. No puzzles, basically. He definitely has to end or ace roller. If he doesn't do one of these things, then I just win. Probably gonna go for it later. Zorak break, okay. That doesn't work with the GX. And you'll stick him, okay, that's that's just the game. Unless he runs some explosion, of course. Which he might. And he doesn't. Okay, that's just the game. Tetria. And yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the games, and I was happy to show you the strengths of uh, yeah, Hokiava with some new tricks.